We would like to thank you all for joining us today. Today, we are here representing a variety of organizations. We are standing in solidarity with the families of Willie McCoy, Ronnell Foster, Angel Ramos, and the countless other families who have lost their loved ones to police murder here in the city of Vallejo. Tonight, we will be addressing the city hall. We will also be addressing the governor of the state of California and the attorney general. Tonight, we are making a request on behalf of California Families United for Justice that Attorney General Becerra immediately launch an investigation into Vallejo Police Department. Well. My name is Melissa Nold. I'm here as an attorney for a number of the people standing behind me, but also as a resident of the city of Vallejo for my entire life. We're not just here asking the attorney general to come in. We are begging him to come in. The city is out of control. People are dying. They're being abused. They're being arrested over and over and over. Every time I turn around, I have a new client that has been abused, arrested, violated, died. Every, it seems like every few months we're adding a member to this club that nobody wanted to be a part of, of people that have been injured by Vallejo PD. We're not just asking as a simple request. We are begging, we are begging the Attorney General to come in before another life is lost, before another son or daughter is killed by these officers that are out of control. Recently, the city of Vallejo has asked the DOJ's Community Relations Division to come in as if we have some sort of a PR problem in Vallejo. We don't have a PR problem, we have a violence problem. People are dying. And we don't need community relations. We don't we need an investigation. We need to figure out why these officers why are these officers not being investigated, disciplined, retrained? Why when they're violating their policies over and over? And I see this personally myself. Nobody's getting disciplined, nobody's getting retrained, and nobody's taking responsibility. That is the attorney general's job to come in when the city refuses to police itself. Yeah. And that's what we're going to demand and command. We're going to demand that the city of Vallejo, the mayor, the councilmen, get involved so that this violence can stop. We are not going to sit here another day and have another victim of Vallejo PD when this is all preventable. Today we have a number of the families that would like to express not only their outrage and concerns for what's going on. We first would like to ask the family of William McCoy to come down. Representative. And the person coming would be David Harrison, Willie's cousin. Hello, everybody. Um, everything in, in light of all of the families, uh, Willie, my, my cousin Willie McCoy, Donnell Foster, uh, uh, Rom huh? Angel Ramos. Um, I, I'm shook because I watched another video this morning of a lady being shot in the face in Texas. This is ridiculous what's going on. And we watch it all of the time on social media and on and on television but we are families that's really been affected by this it did hit home it hit our doorstep and i think that the reason why nothing's being done by the department of justice why the mayor won't even mention anybody's name why nothing's ever been addressed why these people are allowed to do their own investigations is because <laughs> they don't care they're laughing on these videos at us and we demand it now we demanding it because we don't want something to happen. It's not just another person getting shot by police because we're getting used to that right now. But we, one thing that we ain't used to is our family members being taken from us, okay? Being pulled over just because you're black or Latino. This is a racist problem. That's what's not being addressed. It's racism in a police department. And they're exercising their, 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 under the color of state law, they're violating people's rights out here and getting away with it and nothing's happening. And the people are angry now and we don't know what we might do. What do you do when you're being bullied every day? One day you're gonna not be up for being bullied anymore. And this is what they got. And this is, if the people don't want that, then the people got to come out. They got to support AB 392. They got to support these bills that, that bring transparency to these investigations. Um, we need the history on these officers. These officers aren't even being drug tested. Right. But they're drug testing dead men that they've murdered. Exactly. 
they're shooting people in the back, Jesse James type of behavior. And these these guys are on these guys must be on steroids or something. You know, you'll check up at the league to see if he's on steroids, but you won't check a police officer that has people's lives in their hand. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. People have to wake up now and make a decision because we have children that's out here. And God forbid, Willie was only 20 years old, okay? There's younger than that, that this is happening to all over the United States and no one's doing anything about it and no one's taking notice to it. It's all about what the next song is. What well, the next song is, you don't never know. It might be at your doorstep before you know it. And this time, then people won't stop burning down buildings and doing stuff. Wake up, wake up America. Cause we tired of it and we, we angry. We ain't asking and begging no more. We demand it. I know these families up here, they are, we all demanding that something be done because none of these children die for free. You can't just do this and go home and have a parade about it. It's not gonna happen no more. That's all I got to say. All right. One of the issues that we are facing here in the city of Vallejo is not only our law enforcement murdering our loved ones, they are also terrorizing the community and families. For example, three members from Willie McCoy's family within a short period of time have been murdered and harassed by Vallejo PD. His cousin, who is a former Marine, was assaulted on his front porch by Officer David McLaughlin, who also Take your time, baby. Take your time. Take your time. Who also assaulted a man while off duty in Walnut Creek. Then Willie McCoy was executed by a six man firing squad. How do you kill a man who is sleeping? What initially started off as a welfare check turned into a brutal execution of a 20 year old sleeping man. Then three weeks ago, his 20-year-old niece was handcuffed to the steering wheel of her vehicle. She was then forcibly removed and she was tased. All three are of the same family. This is not a rare occurrence here in the city of Vallejo. Angel Ramos' family has had a loved one stolen by police murder and they have also been terrorized. We are here today, standing, demanding that something be done. We are tired of losing our loved ones at stank sanctioned murder. We're gonna have Angela Giles uh, representing Ronell Foster's family. My name is Angela Giles. I'm the aunt of Ronell D'Angelo Foster. He was murdered February 13, 2018 by Officer Ryan McMahon. <coughs> Had Vallejo PD released a report that they just released days ago, Willie McCoy would not be dead. He died at the hands of the same man. He said he killed our child for riding his bike recklessly and didn't want him to hurt himself. So he was ready to educate him. His education was death. Has anyone here, I pray to God, if you can stand to watch it, watch the video that we released Wednesday. Clear as day. On his hands and knees, cowering away. Shot in his back. Never a threat. Not one time was he an aggressor. It was murder. The attorney general, the district attorney, the chief of police, the mayor of Vallejo. I'm holding all of your hands bloody with Willie McCoy's blood. Because had that information been released in a timely manner, that child wouldn't be dead right now. We're not asking nobody nothing. We're not begging for nothing. We demanding for what's right, what's just, and what's fair. Accountability, transparency, God here and see all, and he's showing everybody right now. Stand up and be right, people. 
Stand up and get right. We tired. We tired. It's enough of our children's blood in these streets. We tired. We protect and serve is what the side of that vehicle say. And they all dead. They all dead. Angel mama called for help. She called to help her child. And he dead at the hands of protect and serve. Attorney General, stand up. Man up. Woman up. It's time. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, We're not going to hear from the family of Angel Ramos. This is Angel's sister, Alicia. First, I want to talk about my brother, Angel Ramos. He was the sweetest, funniest, most loving person, adventurous, loved nature. He grew up and we said he was going to be the next Steve Irwin. And he never got to fulfill nothing. He wanted to travel the world, go camping around the world, different forests, just live life freely. And that was stolen from him because he was in a fist fight. Who dies? Who was murdered? for being in a fist fight. It's just crazy to think about. And I miss my brother so much and he deserves to be here. Vallejo for Racial Justice, APTP, I'm sorry, APTP. The family of Mario Romero have been out here for over two years trying to get justice and accountability. We are saddened for the additional losses and yet glad that now there are more people at the table because it is time to build a sustained and strategic movement for sorry for police accountability in Vallejo. It's beyond media moments and city council meetings. It's about the not sexy stuff, the base building and the organizing. That's what we are focused on so we can prevent any more bodies from falling at the hands of DPD. also like to address is we are now obtaining these records due to SB 1421 and what we are discovering is that we have problems throughout the state of California in our police departments. I would like to use the example of the Golden State Killer, East Area Rapist, Visalia Ransacker, all one man, who was a police officer in the state of California, oh, yeah. who was raping and murdering while policing. We have an assembly member by the name of Jim Cooper, who is a former law enforcement. Jim Cooper has been adamant about voting against AB 392. California Act to Save Lives, which is authored by Dr. Shirley Weber. Yes. I would like to make notice that Assemblymember Jim Cooper has authored Bill AB 141. If you are not familiar with AB 141, let me give you just a little backdrop. AB 141 is a piece of legislation that he is trying to get passed solely for the purpose of the Golden State Killer. He would like counties throughout the state of California to finance the cost of prosecuting a police officer who was raping and killing for 40 years in the state of California. I will go so far as to say that we actually need a database preferably a federal database, where we can keep track of these police officers. Because again, let's not forget, this is someone who is supposed to be in our communities protecting and serving. He has been charged with over 13 counts of homicide and 50 plus counts of rape. 
And here we are, the taxpayers of the state of California, having to finance the cost of oh, prosecuting him. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the city of Vallejo has paid out over $4.5 million in the past five years, all for civil rights violation cases. It is time that the state of California stop and take an honest, hard look and let's get AB 392 passed. All right. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Get it. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. My name is Adante Pointer. I'm an attorney. I too represent many of the families who stand behind me, united to make sure that justice is served here in Vallejo. Over the course of several years, we have seen far too many families have their loved ones, these are their mothers, their fathers, their sons, their uncles, brothers, and sisters, harassed, beaten, unjustifiably jailed, and unfortunately killed. And what happens here is the police department Rather than bringing justice on the side of the person who was victimized, instead they delay, they cover up, they deny, and then in the case that we see that just happened most recently with Ronell Foster, they put out not only a smear campaign to victimize the victim, but then they put out a video in order to mislead and misguide the public as to the true facts of what took place. It was only after fighting with the city for a year that they finally came clean with the truth that that officer shot Ronell Foster in the back multiple times. But that is not the first instance. This is the pattern and practice, the way of doing business here in the city of Vallejo. But we're here to tell you, and we're here to be a call of justice to say that the usual way of doing business over. is over. That's right. That's right. Over. We're calling on the state's top cop, the attorney general, to no longer sit on the sidelines. This is not a time to sit on your hands. This is not a time to be academic and order another study. Man up. This is time to get to the business of doing the people's business right here in the city of Vallejo because there is a pattern of practice that this the police department is not only unwilling to police itself, but it's also willing to do just injustice against the people that they're supposed to protect and serve. And so with that, once again, we're calling on the attorney general to get involved, to execute the duties of his office and to hold true the laws of the state of California on behalf of the people he's supposed to be protecting, which are those people who are the most vulnerable of us or to those people who do not have the badge and gun, but instead are having their justice taken out against them on the streets of the city of Vallejo. And I'd like to now turn over uh, this mic, our, the proverbial mic, if you will, to Cat Brooks, please, Ms. Brooks. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Cat Brooks. I'm the executive director of the Justice Teams Network and the co-founder of the Anti-Police Terror Project. And like Alicia said, we have been working with families in Vallejo for well over two or three years now. I'm based in Oakland. When we were here two weeks ago, I told the Vallejo City Council that it used to be that the Oakland Police Department held the title of the most brutal, violent, vile, and corrupt department in the Bay Area. I then congratulated the Vallejo City Council because this is now their police department that holds that record in the Bay Area, that title in the Bay Area. I also told the Vallejo City Council last week that the reason why the Oakland Police Department no longer murders six to 10 people every single year is because the community, the anti-police terror project, the family of Oscar Grant and many others, we built a movement of accountability inside of the city of Oakland where they understood that every single time they murdered with the, murdered one of us, we, there would be accountability. That's right. That's right. What we let Vallejo know is we've been working to build capacity to be able to bring that same energy here. And sadly, they helped us build it by continuing to murder innocent people and adding people to this club that nobody wants to, to be, a be a part of. of. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, imagine my surprise as I was sitting in my car and someone sent me a text message that said, following the last city council meeting where we were all here and raising ruckus, 
that the Vallejo City Council, along with the mayor, had the great idea to bring in a police consultant to help them do better. Well. <laughs> and that police consultant is former Oakland Police Chief Howard Jordan. <laughs> I almost wrecked my car. I need the people of Vallejo to understand Jordan is not the answer in terms of building a working police department. Jordan was the chief when several black and brown men were murdered at the hands of the Oakland Police Department, including Alan Bluford, That's who was right. an 18-year-old black man who was running away, who was shot in the back, and then the cop shot himself in the foot and tried to blame it on Alan. That's right. Mm -hmm. And had no accountability. Mm -hmm. Jordan is the police chief that was chief during Occupy. And in case we have forgotten about how the Oakland Police Department responded to Occupy, they raided the camps at night. That's right. They tear gassed pregnant women. That's right. They drug naked women and children out of their tents into the street. And I could talk about the night that we were evicted and we marched around the city of Oakland peacefully for hours. And we returned to Oscar Grand Plaza, City Hall. Didn't try to cross any lines. And the Oakland Police Department said this is an unlawful assembly. And then the tear gas came. That's right. The flashbang grenades came. And all the rubber bullets came. That was the protest in which Scott Olson, a military veteran who was out there peacefully protesting, was hit in the head with one such weapon and is now permanently disabled. My daughter was four years old, and because we were not given the appropriate warning, experienced her first taste of tear gas. There were countless injuries that night, and it ended up costing the city of Oakland millions of dollars. Jordan did not retire from the Oakland Police Department because he it. had uh, medical issues. Right. We sent him packing right. with how many people we had in the streets. Right. So why the Vallejo City Council, the city of Vallejo, would choose to compound an already egregious problem with an egregious officer is beyond us. But we are here to say that Oakland, Sacramento, Vallejo, we are standing in solidarity. Yes. This is not a media moment. No, it's this not. is not a moment in time. No, it's not. We no. have been working towards this for no. several years now. That's right. We are building the infrastructure, the base, the know-how, and the power to where we rip that title out of the hands of Alejo PD as well. Right. So that black and brown indigenous people can walk the streets of Alejo or drive the streets of Alejo without being worried about being gunned down in their car while they're asleep. Yes. Thank you. Next, next we're going to hear from Cephas Uncle Bobby Johnson. That's right. Well, I am, as you know, affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby. I'm the uncle of Oscar Grant. Of course, recently I just read that the mayor made a request to have the Department of Justice section called Community Oriented Policing Services to come to a Vallejo. Cops is not what we need here in Vallejo. That's just a grievance section for the community to cry about what's going on with the police department, but no investigation of the police department itself. So we appeal as a community here in Vallejo to the attorney general of this state, of course, the federal Department of Justice to bring in the, D the Department of Justice for a pattern and practice investigation. Because this Police Department has a pattern and practice of killing, on a repeated basis, many people of color. Justice for Mario Romero. In 2012, if we remember, there were like seven to nine killings right here out of this Vallejo Police Department. And it has not stopped since that time period. There is a problem with the policing here in Vallejo and community-oriented policing services coming here is not the solution to this problem. It's not. We have to have the DOJ here. And again, to the State Attorney General, this is our appeal to you. In order to bring peace to this community, as we stated in our last hearing here at City Council, is that what we see happening when the community is outraged is just the beginning of something that can turn into something that we as a community don't want to happen here in Vallejo. But it so we are calling out to you to hear this plea that you need to bring in the Department of Justice for a pattern and practice investigation so that these officers that got two, three, and four shootings on their records 
to be investigated for this continual shooting that we see happening in this community. Willie and so I stand here and, and support a Willie McCord's family. We stand here as a community to make sure that Vallejo changes practice when it comes to killing black and brown folks in this community. So we stand here today making that be heard, making it be known, and putting the warning out that we have to do something today. Thank you. ain't going nowhere. Right. Our final appeal is to the governor of the state of California, Governor Gavin Newsom. As you prepare to take your tour around the state of California, I ask that you ask your constituents how they feel about police murder in their communities. I ask Governor Newsom that you stand and you support Dr. Shirley Weber's bill, AB 392, yes. California Act to Save Lives. Mm -hmm. right. We believe that you are a fair and a just governor, and we are hopeful that you will hear us. Because if you do not, we will continue. Thank you.